Hello, in this example, we're going to compute cash flow from asset using the equation that is based on operating cash flow and networking, net capital spending in addition to networking capital. So first, let's take a look at where we can get this information. To compute operating cash flow, we'll need EBIT, depreciation, and taxes. So all these informations is located in the income statement. So let's go and take a look at the income statement and extract that information. So here's our sample in income statement. We have earnings before interest and tax of $240,000. And we have depreciation of $30,000. And we have tax of $48,450. So that's the information we just look at. So $240,000 is earnings before interest and tax. We're going to So we have we're going to put down the information we just find from the income statement. So earnings before interest and tax is $240,000. We're going to add $30,000 in depreciation and we're going to subtract tax of $48,450. And that will give us our total operating cash flow. So did you get $221,550? Excellent. So we get our first item, which is operating cash flow. Next, let's take a look at net capital spending. We need ending net fixed assets minus beginning net fixed assets. So both of these items will be in will be from the balance sheet. And then the last item depreciation, we already have that. But just for completeness, I want to reiterate that that comes from the income statement. So I'm going to have you pause the video and try to work this one out on your own. So go back to the balance sheet, the sample balance sheet. Um, Find the ending net fixed assets minus the beginning net fixed assets plus depreciation and compute net capital spending. So go ahead and pause the video now. So here's our sample balance sheet. Remember that year one is the ending number and year zero is the beginning number. So for net fixed assets, this is our ending number. We need to subtract that from our beginning value. Did you get $270,000? If you do, congratulations. If you don't, pause the video again and take a look, go back to the balance sheet and the income statement and see where you may have made your mistake. Now, the last part is to compute additions to networking capital. Now, if you remember correctly, we already did this work, so we can just go ahead and copy that. Did you remember this example we did earlier? Uh, if you didn't, go back to, the, to go over your work again or review the, the, the slides and find this part and really make sure that you understand how we come up with negative $88,450. So now to use the um, cash flow from asset formula, we'll have to take operating cash flow minus networking net capital spending and minus additions to net to networking capital. So cash flow from total total cash flow from asset is to put all this together, we take $221,550 that we generated from our operating cash flow and we subtract from it $220,000 $270,000 that we spend on net capital spending and we subtract a negative, so this is tricky, of the $88,450. So our total cash flow from asset is $40,000. Um, again, I encourage you to pause the video at any point in time to make sure that you understand how to do each calculation. So be sure that you, are, you can replicate the calculation that I just did. Here is just a much easier way to read. I typed this up rather than my handwriting. So if you have problem reading my handwriting, uh, this page will, will help you um, getting all the numbers correctly. Again, the key here is um, understanding where the data comes from. So whether or not it comes from the balance sheet 
all the income statement and then understanding which column is the beginning value and which column is the ending value. So what we have just seen is computing cash flow from asset using this method. The next, uh, what we want to do next is to show you how to compute the cash, uh, the cash flow from asset using the first method, which means that we're going to look at how to compute cash flow to creditors and cash flow to stockholders. So for cash flow to start hold to creditors, first we need interest pay and we need to subtract net new borrowing. Interest pay will come from the income statement and net new borrowing is, as I mentioned earlier, is ending, ending total liability minus uh, lending long-term liability minus beginning long-term liability. So long-term liability will come from the balance sheet. So from the income statement, we see that interest is $20,000. And from the balance sheet, we see that long-term liability, long-term debt, did not change. So this company did not borrow any new money that year. So for this company is relatively straightforward. We have $20,000 is interest pay. We did not make any new borrowing. So over the year, we pay $20,000 to creditors. Now let's look at cash flow to owners. Cash flow to owners is dividend pay minus net new equity raise. So again, dividend, this actually comes from the um, statement of owner's equity. So this is not income statement and not balance sheet, but this is from statement of owner's equity. For simplicity, we have combined that information in the income statement in our example. So we saw that for common stock dividend, it was $20,000. So dividend, just by coincidence, was also $20,000. For net new equity raise, again, that come from the balance sheet. So let's take a look at that. In this case, remember that for net new equity, we are looking at just common stock and pay in surplus. We do not want to include accumulated retained earnings. And for this company, again, it did not issue any stock. Common stock and pay in surplus remain at $490,000. Um, so there's no new stock issued during that year. So no new stock issues. So cash flow to stockholder is also $20,000. Now we can look at the total cash flow to both parties. So we have $20,000 that is paid to creditors plus $20,000 that is paid as dividend. So the total is $40,000. And of course, that is exactly the same as cash flow to assets because both of them uh, has to equal. So to sum up, we want to review our accounting identity. So we know that in the balance sheet, total assets equal to total liability plus owner's equity. When we talk about cash flow, cash flow from asset has to equal to cash flow to creditors plus cash flow to stockholders. So we can check that that should always be true. This concludes our discussion on financial statements, cash flows, and taxes.